one game every Vector owner has is Mindstorm, the 1982 game built into the console itself. This is a clone of the 1979 Asteroids game, um, perfect for the console really because it used the same Vector technology, both the arcade for Asteroids and the console here. Because it's the back-end game, the manual is actually included in the Vectrex user manual itself for the game and you get the screen overlay with the machine in the box. And there you go, that is Mindstorm. So, controls, you move your ship with, with the joystick, you can rotate left and right. Then you can use button 3, the thrust button, to move your ship forward, so it bursts. This is similar to asteroids, of course. Then button number 4 is your fire button. And button number 2 is my favorite. It is called the escape button. Or it just escaped right into a mine. But the manual calls it mysteriously moves your ship to a new location, which of course in asteroids is just a hyperspace. What should be apparent from the video is that the diagonal lines is really smooth. You see no pixelation because frankly there isn't any. The machine draws the diagonal lines directly from one point to another. It doesn't build it up with individual pixels. And this is of course the beauty of a raster display. Ah, sorry, of a vector display over a raster display. Also apparent is that all of the polygons are unfilled. It's only wireframes. Again, this is a limitation due to the vector display. Vector displays can't create filled in polygons. In order to color, the screen, of course, is black and white. In order to get a bit of color, into the game, use the overlay. I especially like this bit where the um, alien spaceship seeds the minefield. What you'll notice is that, unlike asteroids, where the asteroids break apart into smaller asteroids when you shoot them, here if you shoot a mine, it gets destroyed and then replaced by a smaller minefield, a smaller mine, until you've sh shot the smallest mine. That was just one of the aliens. There we go, level one complete, warping to the next level, and again we have the aliens seeding the minefield. As you can see from the gameplay, it's actually remarkably smooth. It plays great, considering that this is a 35-year-old game. Um, and if you compare it to games on the Atari 2600, well, those, of course, things like combat, um, are brilliant. None of it is as smooth or as fast as this. This is a brilliant game. Graphics, still acceptable given what it is. Um, my kids still actually play this game. Um, there's a lot of fun to be had with this. The two player option is just swapping out, basically taking turns on the same machine. Apparently the built-in copy of the game has a bug um, basically the game crashes once you reach level 13. If you bothered to mail in, send a letter to GCE, the makers of the, the um, Vectrex, they would send you a cartridge with the correct version of the game, because nobody bothered to do this, I think frankly because very few people probably reached it. Um, 
that game is exceedingly rare. I would love to get my hands on a copy. I have never even seen one. I just loved how that alien seeds more mines if you don't shoot it fast enough. You'll notice that there is a bit of variety between the levels. There's now also mines with four um, spikes, four arms. They basically break apart into, into more different mines. Sound-wise, the sound is pretty good for a game of its era. Um, it's got limited tunes, it's got appropriate sound effects, and is um, highly enjoyable. Great, I hope you've enjoyed that look. See you next time.